What's up everybody and welcome to The Safe State. I'm Landon, this is Ryan, and this is Seth. And we are excited about this year and next year because it's gonna be the years of VR. Mm. Virtual reality. <laughs> welcome <laughs> to the world of tomorrow. tomorrow. I didn't expect that to happen. <laughs> <laughs> But all right, so what's what's happening right now is uh, GDC just just ended, mm -hmm. yep. and uh, Valve introduced their uh, combination with HTC, yep. mm -hmm. the Vive VR system, which is supposed to come out this year. Sony's working on their Project Morpheus. Oculus is still out there doing its thing, mm -hmm. rifting. What do you guys think about this being the 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 era of VR now? Do you even agree with that statement? Uh, be, with 2015 being the year of virtual reality. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, it's kind of like how all of a sudden we're like back in the 60s, 70s, we're doing 3D movies with the crappy blue and red sure. glasses. And then all of a sudden we get to late, you know, 2000 teens and we're and 3D IMAX is the big thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Then we had Nintendo doing the virtual boy. 90s was huge for attempted VR. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like, Shoot, fail, and then ho ho! Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, with the way 3D movies have improved, um, almost sure, to the yeah. point of being annoying. Yeah. The I, yeah. I mean, I think it could be. I think it could be the next thing. Yeah. I, I, I think it will be. And the reason I, my main reason is, is because uh, it's not one company doing it. When Nintendo released oh, yeah. the Virtual Boy, it was like, boom! Look what we did. And everyone's like, you it's know, the dead. other companies are like, okay, what is this dumb thing? And then well, it, no it other just kind of major. Sucked. Corporations right, did it. Right. There was there was definitely knockoffs. Yeah, sure. right. But I mean, like, yeah. to the level if you look now, you've got major players splintering and moving around, and, investing a ton of money. Yeah, I mean, and and you know, if it was one company that was doing it and uh, putting out their demos, and everybody went to you know the GDCs and, and all these things and, and played with the demos, and then came away going, yeah, this is this isn't gonna work, then it would still just be that one company, and they'd probably kind of have a, a Virtual Boy 2.0 going sure, on. Exactly. But everyone's playing well, these things and then going crap we got to start our own well <laughs> you know? uh john carmack at gdc gave uh, a damn near two hour keynote presentation talking about his work with oculus and what what they're doing over there and to your point where you know years ago we had you know the the poor iterations of mm -hmm. vr and he's the reason why the oculus really isn't out yet to the public in a, a consumer market yet mm -hmm. is because he doesn't want to basically poison the water Oculus has had a lot of fear of, the, the term that we hear internally a lot is poisoning the well. There's this fear that if a really bad VR product goes out, it could set the industry back to the 90s. Mm -hmm. and, and he's working with other companies like Samsung and stuff for, for uh, portable VR works and stuff like that. And it's, sure. And he doesn't want to release this stuff early on and be like, here's the first VR system that's on the market that we've been hearing all this stuff about, and it's terrible. And right. then nobody wants to invest in it, everybody yeah. wants to run away yeah. with it, away from it. So to definitely, when you hit the ground running, you need to do it right. right. And yeah. that's what his biggest concern seems to be right now. Well, and there's a huge technical hurdle that a lot of people don't really, uh, don't really realize. And that's that if you want it to be you know, perfectly sharp so that you don't see pixels, uh, it needs to be high res, but it needs yeah. to be high res times two because you've got two screens. Right. And then you need something that can run high res. And when I say high res, I'm talking like 1080 or well, I better. Think the, uh, the only specs that I remember seeing was uh, the Morpheus is shooting uh, 1080p per each eye yeah. in theirs. Um, so you need you need something backing that that can process that, mm -hmm. which is pretty hefty. I mean, if, if you're trying to yeah. take a modern day game, um, most computer monitors, 22, 23, 24, and something like that run 1080p. If you're gonna go much higher than that, you need something pretty beefy. And so there's, there's a big technical hurdle with getting that going because the other side of it is, uh, I read it in an article where they were saying you want it to be 60 frames per second because below that, it, it hurts people's eyes. Yeah. Um, which, you know. There's weird technical limitations when you put something that close to your face. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, so. what, what the real world perception that we have with our eyes to, you know, 3D space and you, change that to something like we can see it from a distance and the brain processes it but with the whole thing with virtual reality is the reality portion of it you're yeah. trying to create a secondary reality where you can exist in this world and you want it to be as close to the real thing in terms of how we perceive light yeah period mm -hmm. and that's very so, difficult um what do you guys think about the the other so there's there's some of the tech limitations that yeah. you have to come across to get past that right um, but what about the consumer limitations that you have to hurdle in terms of these these VR systems, they don't work 
by themselves. Like they right, always have yeah. to be tethered to something. So like with the Oculus and with now Valve's version, the Vive VR, mm -hmm. those need to be hooked up to PCs or Steam boxes right. or something yeah. like that. So the the hardware that's going on your head is already probably going to be between two hundred and four hundred dollars, you know, somewhere in, in that market. Mm -hmm. um, but then also has to be attached to a probably easily four hundred dollar box, bare minimum. And then mm -hmm. the same thing with with Sony's Morpheus; it needs to be hooked up to a PlayStation Four. So you're already out out of the gate about four hundred dollars, depending on if you get it on a sale or not. Mm -hmm. And then the hardware. That's a big investment for people. For just a person well, who wants to get into VR, you're looking at bare minimum around $600. Let's, let's jump back to the release of the original iPhone. Um, in order to do updates and things like that, you had to have it, it had to connect to a computer to do mm -hmm. it. It couldn't do any of that over the air because we, at the time, you only had 3G. Um, so you couldn't download a whole OS quickly and stuff like that. Um, and what you saw was because you had that technical hurdle, um, you know, super techie people went and got the thing, but it didn't actually reach like massive proliferation until they kind of breached that hurdle. Um, uh, also, as far as, uh, it, you know, just a few iterations in, people start realizing that there's viability in the product, things like that. So I think to your point um, that, yeah, it's going to be, uh, uh, you know, CarMax, right? It, it's got to it's gotta hit the ground running and it's got to be a solid device that like, because the first people that are going to play it are going to be the most technically critical people. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to be people that are be vocal about it. Too. Exactly. And if, and if, you know, my family comes to me and says, Hey, I heard about this new VR thing. And I'm like, yeah, I have one. It sucks. Then they're done. Yeah. You know? Um, but if I say it's awesome, I can't wait until two versions from now when you don't need it to hook up to a computer. Sure. Cause I mean, let's face it, our phones that are coming out now have processors in them that are rivaling some of these well, it's stuff, computers. Stuff like, I mean, like, people are working on those too. And yeah. Carmack is involved with those as well. Cause he was working with, in his, in his keynote, he was talking about working with Sam Samsung and going to them and then um, Samsung's got a killer chip right now. Yeah, well, so, and, and a lot of people are going to Samsung anyway, just for the OLED screens yeah. that they're producing anyways for these uh, VR systems. Mm -hmm. But he went to them and they they don't release. Uh, they wanted to just go straight to market with this portable VR thing, and, and he was like, no, 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 don't do this because of he didn't want to again poison the water. Right, so right. They don't. Samsung doesn't do dev kits, so they named it uh, like early adopter or something like that yeah. to make it where it's like, this is basically a dev kit, but it's not. Because we're not going to call it a dev kit. Yeah. Yeah. Just to keep trying to step away from, we're not ready to launch yet. Yeah. Um, so, and I think, you know, past that too, there's other um, like physical limitations that you have to, right. you have to go through as well. Just on, you've got this big piece of hardware that's now going <laughs> to yeah. sit on your face right. for, uh, well, your face or your head, depending on which model you go with for a couple hours. If yeah. you look at what uh, Vive and Oculus are doing, those require straps that come across here as well as strap that's going here. And the weight is basically, according to people who have played it, is on your face. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas Sony, you, talk, you listen to interviews with Shuhei Yoshida, the president of Sony, uh, computer, computer Entertainment, he talks about how they went through a lot of hardware iterations because they didn't want that weight on your face because it, it, it fatigues you really quick. Yeah, sure. So they've now figured out a system that uh, sits on your head more like a hat and it puts the weight and pressure on your okay. head that instead makes of your sense. face. Yeah. To, to increase wearability. Man, there's, okay, so, and I keep going back to the iPhone analogy because there's so much here that's just completely new territory. Um, you know, no one's had to make a hat like that right. before <laughs> that can hold the weight. Um, but I think right now, for some inexplicable reason, we're at a time in history technologically where mm -hmm. we're, we have a lot of people that are really creative at coming up with solutions to this. You know, how do you make a phone that has apps and things on it that's useful to the general public? Because um, people at the time just wanted a phone that did a thing. How do you make a, a VR kit something that um, a stay-at-home mom would be interested in? You know, what software do you try to go for that they well, might enjoy? That seems to be the <laughs> thing like, that... Uh, Oculus is at least going with because with, they since they, Facebook bought them out right. and this was also a thing that Carmack talked about. Really, I'm, I'm going to have to put a link in the description yeah. for the Carmack talk because it is absolutely incredible and talks about how, yes, their primary focus is still going to be on gaming, but there's this huge other market that they need to hit to make this viable, like this works in all sorts of territories, okay. including architecture as well as just for uh, like home video and looking at uh, home photos. It makes things you know a little bit more challenging. You will have various internal divides about how resources get allocated and so on. We have all the wonderful stuff that we're doing on the PC, the high-end work that lets us build these near photorealistic scenes in some cases, running with all the benefits of very high quality position tracking, very high refresh rates. But what we can do on the mobile is still pretty exciting. You know, it turns out that people kind of like photos and videos, and we can do photos and videos with virtual reality headsets in a way that is very powerfully better than what you get with traditional devices. And that's gonna bring tons and tons of people in. 
Yeah. Like you take a panoramic photo and now you kind of experience it in a unique way. Well, it's kind of like way. what we saw with yeah. the, the Microsoft talk and what they were doing with HoloLens. Oh, the HoloLens. With the HoloLens. I forgot about that. Which is <laughs> more augmented reality rather than virtual reality. But, but still, yeah. if, we, if we're going to, I mean, with some of the stuff that that other niche outside of the gaming thing, because with gaming you definitely want to replace the reality, but yeah. you know possibly with the, the the niche market of the stay-at-home mom, if you want to call it that, then it may be you know, like an augmented, you know, maybe creating some kind of hardware that is capable of mm -hmm. utilizing both things. Yeah, absolutely. Um, sure. But there's, I honestly think it's going to be kind of like like when the when the, when the automotive vehicle first came out. You know, it was just. The, the rich people had it, just the very niche people had it, mm -hmm. and... Are we still centered? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> um, but eventually, you know, it's, everybody's got a car. Right. And it's probably going to be, you know, this may be 2015, maybe the year of virtual reality, but it's, there's going to be that very niche people that are playing uh, Eve Valkyrie. Mm. Well, uh, but, but then, <clears throat> five... Seven, but with as fast as things are, are moving in our, in our modern times with technology, like you said, with, with creativity of people creating solutions for these problems of these hardware, um, who knows? It could be two or three years before yeah. we have a mass marketable virtual reality experience for both gaming or also augmented reality for everybody else. Right. Well, if there's an episode of Top Gear where they talk about the origination of the car and they try to find the first car that was laid out like current cars and it, there were a lot of different versions of cars that had goofy controls and like in order to shift you had to like do three different things in the right order otherwise the car died and then one car to start it you like Something had to crank it and it would break most people's wrists and, and all those things it's like i mean hardware is going to go through iterations before it hits the right one but i think so many people are excited about it right now that that kind of oh yeah the hype the hype is real yeah and big That's companies not just like you know techie nerds that just want like yeah. you know, VR play, play Skyrim and wave their hands around. <laughs> right. So, yeah. I mean, it, there you kind of have it. It's a wide variety of, of thoughts and ideas here. It's um, a big, but topic. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Are you actually excited about all this VR news between the Vive, the Oculus, Sony's Morpheus? Let us know in the comments. As always, you can find out more from us. We're on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash the safe state. We're also on Twitter at the underscore safe state. Uh, keep it here for more awesome gaming news. We'll see you guys next time.